the King Frank Ocean dropped two songs. And of course, it's just basically him saying like, you know, I just need a company now. I just needed someone around. And that's kind of how I felt when I first moved to LA because I didn't really know anybody for real. I'm trying to look at kind of more of the positives. I feel like it can, can be easier said than done, especially depending on who it is, what their situation is, everything they're going through. Like On this video is a part of my series called my Eli art and chat video in this video I'll be drawing one of my favorite artists her name is Billie Eilish I started this picture like a year ago but I never finished her so I thought it would be cool for me to just finish her today in this video I love to draw but I feel like I'm always usually procrastinating and never really have enough time to do so so I feel like incorporating art on my YouTube channel will definitely make me want to create more often so that's what we're gonna do today but before the video starts don't forget to follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter and they're always linked in my description box below and I post every single Monday and Thursday so subscribe if you want to join the Eli Army, which is what I call all of my subscribers, but that's it for me So let's just get on to this Eli art and chat video. So today I'll be talking about a couple things I'll be talking about music. I'll be talking about shows and I'll be talking about kind of just like the world status right now How I feel about it and everything like that, but I'm just gonna get started So the first song I'm gonna talk about is a song called Tusi Fly by Drake. Okay, so I think this song just came out today I really like that song. I saw a lot of people were posting it on like Instagram and stuff like that I know Drake constantly has bops like I already know that but I wasn't like super thirsty to listen to it until I saw one of my friends had said like TikTok is gonna like eat the fuck out of this song and then once I like saw that I was just like hmm songs that like go viral on TikTok actually be like really good so I was just like let me go just listen to it so that's when I listened to it and I really like this song Drake always kind of comes with bops though so it's not surprising and yeah that's kind of really all I have to say about this song I think it just came out and yeah I'm here for it on to more important news no shade to Drake but the King Frank Ocean dropped two songs I think they came out yesterday April 3rd or maybe I was just late to the party. I'm not exactly sure, but I know it came out in April. He dropped a song called Cayendo and Dear April. I'm about to play both of them just so I can give you like my whole like opinions on them. So yeah. <laughs> Dear April, I freaking love that song. I've been waiting for this song to drop for a very long time. I don't know if you know, but he was like having these like club nights called Prep and he had played this song Cayendo at the club, but it was like a club mix type song. It wasn't this actual acoustic version. It was like really auto tuned. It was like very like a beat. And it was just like kind of different from like what a normal like Frank Ocean fan will be used to hearing from him, at least in my opinion. So I didn't know really what to expect. I mean, I really liked the club mix too, but it's just, not like the usual regular Frank song that you would usually hear. So when he like just dropped the acoustic version of this song, it was just like, wow, like I got the best of both worlds. <laughs> I like the acoustic version better just because like it's kind of like the Frank I fell in love with in a way. Just the sound, the peacefulness. My first time listening to this acoustic version was in my bathtub last night. I was high and I was in the bath and somebody on Instagram had tagged me in it because everybody knows I stand Frank Ocean. So I went to listen to it while I was high in the bathtub and it was just like a whole experience. Like the canvas was lit, like it was a whole move. <laughs> I feel like the first time listening to a song can definitely impact how you feel about the song because like you match it with like that memory in a way. And so I really stand this song for that reason. I'm gonna also play Dear April and then I'm gonna get back to you on that. Okay, so that was Dear April. Dear April gives me kind of like endless vibes. Like I could definitely have heard that one endless. I love that song. I also listened to that song high. I listened to that song before I listened to Cayendo yesterday. It made me want to cry. I'm so happy he dropped it in April. Like I feel like he was kind of petty for that. Cause that song, that was like an unreleased song for a long time too. <sighs> I don't know, I'm very happy. <laughs> I think he really did his thing. And I just really hope I can get another album from him in 2020. Like as much terrible shit has happened this year in 2020, like the least you can do Frank is like, like bless my ears like one last time. I just feel like it's necessary at this point and hopefully my wish can come true this year. I'm just proud of like his evolution of music. Next person I'm gonna talk about is Conan Gray. I love Conan Gray. I found out about Conan Gray from his YouTube channel like, a couple years ago like when I was like a sophomore or a junior in high school I think. I fell in love with just his like personality and like his YouTube video and then like his music afterwards. So it's like oh wow and then to see like how he's grown like Conan Gray has definitely been somebody who for me, he dropped 
drops music at the perfect time. Like he dropped the Comfort Crowd like in August and I had just moved to LA in August and like literally, and the chorus is just basically him saying like, you know, I just need a company now. I just needed someone around. And that's kind of how I felt when I first moved to LA because I didn't really know anybody for real besides like my sister and my aunt. And so it was just like, damn, like I just really miss my friends a lot. And so like that song came out. Then he dropped a song called Checkmate in the summertime, which I went through like a breakup in the summertime. And so like Checkmate was just literally like, I think my most streamed song on Spotify in the summertime because like I just had that same energy. Like he really just spoke from me through his song Checkmate. His song Maniac came at the perfect time. And I'm usually not like a crier when it comes to like music or whatever, but like Conan Gray definitely has made me cry from his music like a couple times from like a lot of his singles he's dropped from 2019. And I just love it. His first debut album came out in March and I was very, very satisfied with it. My favorite songs off the album that weren't singles were The Cut That Always Bleeds, Fight or Flight, Heather are my favorite. Heather is probably my favorite that wasn't already a single off the album. I just think it was like a cool song. I don't relate to it, but I still think it was beautiful. I feel like it was like classic Conan in a way. I don't know, I just loved it. But Fight or Flight is definitely my most listened to song out of that album. Just the whole beginning, like his first verse, like something's gotten into you, you don't look at me the way you used to, like it's just something about that. I don't know, I just love the sound. I love the production. I love everything about this album. So I definitely think Conan Gray did great on his album. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is this whole Miss Rona situation, COVID-19, whatever you wanna call this bitch. And I don't know, I just feel like this topic is definitely something that like, everybody's talking about and all that stuff. There's this post I posted like yesterday. I'm just gonna play it, cause this is kinda how I feel. Maybe the right way of doing it is y'all discussing amongst yourself, not in front of me, because that's distracting to me. Right. In the same way that your spirit is killed, I can feel every little thing. Yeah. And I'm not focusing on what I need to be focusing on because worried I'm worried about, about everybody else. So basically, like, yeah, I understand, like, the world is kind of, like, in a terrible position right now. All of the negativity from this is kind of bringing me down and can definitely make me more like, I don't know, just not in a good headspace. Like instead of like, I guess complaining about all the negatives, I'm trying to look at kind of more of the positives. I feel like it can, can be easier said than done, especially depending on who it is, what their situation is, everything they're going through. I definitely know like in this situation, I am definitely privileged still to have a job. And you know, I'm definitely privileged to still not really have that many things in my life change because of this so far so far bitch um so i definitely know that i'm lucky when it comes to that but i also try not to not ignore the negatives but just kind of just try and submerge myself with positivity and i don't know have a positive outlook on the future because i can definitely be that that person that's like damn this whole year is canceled fuck everything fuck all my goals fuck everything and just kind of give up and just be like in that mood and that's what i'm kind of talking about i don't want all these terrible things that's happening this year to kind of stop people from being as productive and as goal set as they should be because you know everybody had goals this year or at least a lot of people you know had goals in life and things they wanted to do this year and even though things got postponed things got canceled I just don't want to be put in that mindset where I'm kind of just giving up on all of the goals and all of the things I want to accomplish and achieve and places I want to go. I feel like a lot of people are just taking it, you know, day by day, which is understandable, you know, because we really don't know how this is going to turn out. But me just trying to think on the positive side and make sure that I'm not getting myself in that negative headspace, I feel like it's very important, especially for me. So that's what I've been doing when it comes to this whole Ms. Roman situation. So my thing is, I'm grateful for the position I'm in that I'm still you know making money and not having a struggle to pay my rent and you know all my other bills and stuff like that but definitely trying to not I don't know just be depressed and be in a negative headspace and also fuck Miss Rona fuck Miss Rona for everything and everybody who she's done dirty so yeah that's what I gotta say about the whole Miss Rona COVID-19 coronavirus whatever you want to call it pandemic that we're going through right now next I want to talk about shows. So the first show I'm going to talk about is Love is Blind. Love is Blind is not even a show I would ever watch if it wasn't a Netflix original. I literally don't watch those type of shows. I don't watch reality TV and I don't watch like love shows. I'm a drama type show, murder mystery, like comedy type things. But like when it comes to like reality TV or like love shows or anything like that, those aren't usually the type of shows that I gravitate towards. I don't usually ever watch them. Those just don't really interest me like that. But because it was a Netflix 
Netflix original. Like, if it's a Netflix original, I'm probably gonna watch it just because I love Netflix. Like, Netflix originals to me have like some of the best shows like ever. Just my opinion. Like, I don't know. I just really rock with Netflix and like the shows that they make. So because it was a Netflix original, I was like, why not? Why not watch it? But I actually really like the show. Um, it was very entertaining. I thought it was super weird how like these bitches was literally saying like I love you like within like the third day of knowing each other. That was kind of weird to me. I don't know if I could ever be on a show like that. But like definitely if you never watched Love is Blind, I feel like you should even if it's not even that type of show that you would usually watch because like I said, that's not even the type of show I would usually watch. But I still got into the gig. So I feel like you probably should too. Also I'm going to talk about The Circle. Now I feel like The Circle is definitely better than Love is Blind. I think The Circle is better just because they got challenges. Every episode had me like wanting to watch another one. Like there was no slow moments to me in The Circle. Like The Circle, I can't wait for season two. Like it was just a great show. Like I feel like you really connected with the characters. I just feel like that show is really, really good. I really love The Circle. I also, just from the trailer, I didn't really think that show was going to be interesting either. I thought it was going to be really lame and weird, but no. That show is really good. So if you have not seen The Circle, if you had a pick from The Love is Blind and The Circle, I suggest y'all all watch The Circle because I think The Circle is a better show. But I love both shows. The next show I'm going to talk about is a show called I'm Not Okay With This. I love that show just because of how short it is. I know a lot of people don't want to really invest. Well, I don't want to say a lot of people. I know some people don't want to really invest in the show that's going to, you know, has hella seasons already and they got to binge like, you know, so much. And the episodes is like 40 to 50 minutes long. But no, this show, I think the episodes are like 20 minutes long. It's still like one of those like, you know, type of serious shows. It's a, basically a show about this girl who like has powers and she not know how to control it. Which is also not the type of show I would usually watch because I'm not really into like, you know, super power type of shows. But this is kind of like, it's just different. It's just, it's just hit different. This is some professional like, and this, this is in different areas. What the like, y'all just need to get into it. That's a good show. It's like seven episodes. So, literally, it won't take you that long to finish it. So, why not just finish it? And also, if y'all do start it, tell me if y'all think she looks like Billie Eilish because I definitely think this girl looks like Billie Eilish. If she had Billie Eilish's, like, hairstyle and I saw her on the street, I'm for sure probably gonna think it's my girl Billie. I don't know. Tell me if it's just me. I definitely just thought, like, she looked like Billie. But, yeah. And the last show that I'm currently watching, which is kind of like, you may say, like, it's kind of, like, childish, but I'm watching Adventure Time. Adventure Time is literally such like a kid show but not a kid show to me it's a great show to watch if you're ever high just saying and it's just like a show that like i don't know i just want to finish it i'm on like season two it's not on netflix unfortunately it's on hulu but like i've been watching like, like every day and it, it is like a childish type of show but also it's still entertaining the episodes are like uh, 11 minutes long um it's not really that long of a commitment even though they got hella episodes my freaking memory card was full so i don't remember the last thing I just said, but I'm gonna take that as a sign to like wrap this up. And I talked about everything I needed to talk about anyway. So the last thing I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take Billy. I think I'm satisfied with everything that she looks like on here. I actually have painted this to like this like you know watercolor black and white and like gray background that I'm gonna put her on. And then I think I'm just gonna place her in the middle just like that. And I'm gonna glue her on there. So that's what I'm about to do right now. So I'm gonna take my Elmer's glue and I'm going to unscrew it and then just put it all over here. She originally was already on a background, but I just didn't like that background anymore. I didn't feel like it really fit her vibe. And it was just for like my actual class, my senior year that I had to make this project a certain way. But after like, you know, I got the grade for it or whatever, that's when I ripped off the background she actually was on. Now I'm gonna put her on a background that I feel like fits her more and her aesthetic. And I'm just gonna plop her on here and I think I'm gonna eventually add to it but I feel like for right now I'm gonna be satisfied most likely with this background and just putting her up on my wall just how she is I hope she dries really cutely and yeah I'm probably gonna like do more to her to the size of her so it looks more like 3d I'm probably that's what I'm probably gonna do I'm gonna probably add like something to make this look more 3d but for right now I'm satisfied with her I may continue to draw her in my next one but I'm probably gonna actually work on somebody else do something else but who knows depends on how lazy i am or how creative i've been in that time frame so this concludes my eli art and chat video i hope you guys liked the video if you did don't forget to hit the like button also don't forget to comment down below any other art related videos you want me to make or just any other content you would like to see from me on this channel also don't forget to hit the post notification bell if you want to be notified when i post and don't forget to subscribe if you want to join the eli army which again is what i call all of my subscribers but that's it for me so bye guys